Hello students welcome to the next lecture on the Fourier series today we will discuss about the convergence of the Fourier series and how you can find the sum of the Fourier series myself Dr. Gar working in the school of mathematics Thapar Institute what is the objective is that how you can find the sum of the series and its convergence for the for the problems are there like here so firstly you have to define firstly what is the first step is you have to find the Fourier series of this and then we will see under what condition the Fourier series will converge is when it will be converges then what is the sum of the series are there that is like here you can see this is sum of the series this is sum of the series how you can derive this in a very simple and shortcut way is there in the last lecture what we have seen there is a last lecture which is available on this playlist mathematics 2 channel name dr harish garg and you can see that this is the fourier series lecture is there what it, what we have learned in this lecture is uh, you can write any of the function there is a periodic function in terms of the sin and cosine there is a Fourier series where a0 an and bn are defined like here which is available at this one what is the condition for the convergence or what is the condition for the expansion of the Fourier series is whenever the function f of x it must be the periodic it must have the finite number of the discontinuities and it must have the finite number of the maxima and minima whenever these three properties are satisfied then only you can expand this f of x in terms of the Fourier series and these conditions are called as Dirichlet's condition since this is a these are the formulas for the a0 an and bn in terms of the minus pi to plus pi in general you can write in terms of the a comma b clearly sees that whenever you substitute a is my minus pi b as a plus pi then this formula becomes my here or if you want to find the Fourier series between the 0 to 3 then clearly you can take a as a 0 b as a 3 then it becomes my here now our target is that we will see under what conditions the func whatever the series you have defined will converge and when it is converges then what will be the sum of the series the condition is very simple what is the convergence condition uh, the, uh, the condition is that whenever the f and its derivative whatever these two functions are my piecewise continuous then the Fourier series will converge whatever the function it is given to you for example if I say what the function is my x square over the domain 0 to 1 clearly sees that it's a polynomial what is the derivative is that it's a 2x again it's a polynomial it's a piecewise continuous over the domain 0 1 so it means the Fourier series corresponding to this will converge definitely once it is converges then it converges to the uh, whatever the expansion you have written this is my series expansion and so on so it will converge to this whenever it's a continuous whenever the function is the discontinuous then it will take as a uh, average of the lower limit and the upper limit all of you know that this is called as the jump discontinuity what is the meaning of the jump discontinuity is whenever the left hand limits and the right hand limits are not same look like said this figure and this gap is called as the magnitude of the jump for example here we will discuss about the 5 to 6 examples in this video so that you may learn in a very simple manner first of all you can see this is my here what is the derivative of this it is a 2 minus of 2 x p and the domain is my 0 to 3 clearly sees that this function f of x is my piecewise continuous why because it is a polynomial similarly the f dash is my, again a polynomial and it is a continuous function also it is a piecewise continuous so it means whatever the Fourier series you have obtained it will be converges guarantee about that so first of all how you can define the Fourier series of this since the interval is from a to b that is a 0 to 3 so I can take a as a 0 b as a 3 if you substitute here you will get this series r you can see b minus 0 is my 3 and so on now you can substitute the value of the f of x in here in here and in here and after the integration you will get a0 as a 0 after the integration of the this part you will get this series and after this one you will get here substitute this a0 an and bn in here you will get the Fourier series of it once you will get the Fourier series always remember that whenever you want to derive this sum the first step is you have to find the Fourier series of the function once you will find the Fourier series of here now you have to compare them we need 1.2 square 1.3 square are there in general it is a 1 by n square that is this part it means there is no term associated with the 1 by n it means for what value of the n it means your target is to this becomes a 0 
when it will be a zero when this part will be a zero when this part will be a zero so sine term will be a zero only when x will be a zero or x will be my x will be my n pi so if if you take x as a zero what is the value of this this is a cos zero cos zero is my one so it means this part becomes my one by n square it means this will go, goes to the one by this one by two square one by three square and so on but we need the alternating sign it means zero is not possible when it will be n pi so when it will be the n pi so for what value of the x you can choose on so that it will be my n pi if you take x as a 3 by 2 and 3 by 2 lies in between them so therefore you can take x as a 3 by 2 this value is my sin of n pi sin of n pi is my 0 this value will be my cos of n pi what is the value of the cos n pi this is minus 1 raised to power n is there now can you find the value of this from this series you can take the LCM you can summarize them you will get here now once you will open this you will get this series is the required of the proof quickly look at the second example are there now you have to prove this one uh, you have to prove firstly are here since this part that is a f of x is my x square what is the domain is my minus pi to plus pi again this is the polynomial are there and it is a piecewise continuous uh, what is the derivative of this it's a 2x again it's a piecewise continuous so it means whatever the Fourier series you have defined here it will be converges that's a guarantee so we can define the Fourier series of the x square corresponding to minus pi to plus pi. You can take a as minus pi, b as a plus pi. In the Fourier series expansion you will get here. After the integration you will get a0 here. After, after substituting the value of this you can integrate them you will get this value. After this one you will get as a 0. Why? Because x square is my even function. Sine is always be the odd function so the product of them will be my odd function so from minus pi to plus pi is my zero is there. once you will get here you can substitute the value now for the first part since we need the summation of the one by that is we need the one says two square all are my positive sign it means what is the my target is there this value i need to be minus one raised to power n otherwise if we, if it is take to be one then it will goes to the alternating sign so for what value of the x you can take so that it becomes the minus 1 to n simply x is my pi if you take x as a pi then it what is the value of this this is my pi square and so on what is the value of this it is minus 1 raised to power n this is my minus 1 raised to power it is always with a 1 and so on. you will get this answer as of here if you look about this you can see this is the, my alternating sign so how, when it will be the alternating sign when you take this value as a 1 so for what value of the x it will be my 1 that is the 0 and 0 lies in between them so it means you have to take x as a 0 this value is my 0 you will get this expression and you will get here how you can find this you can see if you open this bracket it will be my here that is a all there is a sum of them but it's only for the odd numbers so if if i take one and two if i adding this one and two what will happen you can see this one by two square will be cancelled one by four square will be cancelled rest of them are double p can you find the value of the one by two you can see here you will get this as the required answer look at the another one is there now you can see that this is my again it's a it's a constant function it's a polynomial so f and the f dash both are my piecewise quantity so it means the convergence guarantee about it so once it's a convergence guarantee so the domain is my minus pi to plus pi you can firstly find the a0 an and bn are like here once you will find the a0 an and bn after the calculation you can substitute here you will get the Fourier series this way now how you can reduce this one b again you need the 1 by n square that is for this part b. and i need this as a 0 when it will be the 0 it means either x as a 0 or x as a n pi that is x as my pi so can you can take x as a 0 so what will happen if you take if you take x as a pi what will happen if you take x as a pi it will be my cos n pi cos n pi is my minus 1 power n so it means this is the alternating sign but we need all as a positive sign it means pi cannot be there so i can take x as a 0 it will be here but what is the value of the f of 0 so from the upside you can take the left hand limit is my minus pi the right hand limit is my 
zero. It means this is the discontinuous function b. So once it is a discontinuous, you can take as a average of that, like this one. So remember that whenever it is a continuous, you can take as such. If it is a discontinuous, you can take as a average of this. Now can you find the value of this from here? You can easily see this minus pi by four can be taken as a plus pi by four, and you can see this is a odd function. You can see like this way, you will get this required proof. Another one you can see here again. Uh, this is from my polynomial R. This is a piecewise continuous, so convergence guarantee about that. You can find this as a is my zero, b is my two in this series. B. You will get this expansion R. You can substitute the value of the f of x. You can take them from the zero to one, one to two, and after solving, you will get this R. You can substitute this value here. You can see whenever it's a even, it's a zero R here. How you can deduce this one? B? So you can see all are my positive. So it means this value can never be minus one raised to power n. So either you can take x as a zero, either you can take x as a one, either you can take x as a two. If you take x as a zero, what will happen? This is cos of zero is a one. So it means you can take an about that. If x is one, what will happen? If x is one, it becomes my cos of minus cos of n pi. That is minus one raised to power n. So it becomes a Alternating sign, but since n is odd, so it always becomes a uh, same sign is there. When n is two, it becomes cos of two n pi. What is the value of the cos two n pi? It is always be a plus one. So it means you can take any one of them. So you can take any one of them. So I can firstly, if I take x is two, what is f of two from here? f of two is my zero. After the solving, you can see this value is here. Also, if you want to take x as a zero, what will happen? f of zero. This is nothing but my pi by four, four by pi. This is cos of zero is my one upon n square. What is f of zero is here? That's a zero minus pi by two is my minus four by pi of this is my odd one by n square. So can you find the value of this? This is my minus minus cancel out pi square by eight is sum of one by n square when it is odd is there. Again you can see same derive is there. Also, you can take x as a one in this case because whenever x is one, what is that? This is f of one. It is pi by two minus four upon pi. What is that? This is cos of minus one raised to power n upon n square. N is my odd. Now, what is the f of one? You can take on here. This is a pi. On this side is again a pi. There is a continuous function, so this is my pi. I can take minus pi is on this side. It is minus four by pi. What is that? This is my odd minus one raised to power n upon n square. So what is that? This is my pi by two. This is my minus four upon pi. Now if you open this bracket as a odd, when n is one, it is minus one upon one square. When n is three, it is my minus one upon three square, minus one upon five square, and so on. You can take negative as a common. Then it becomes a positive. And it becomes the pi square by eight. Again, you can see these are the same answers. So in this case, you can take an any of them. Look at the last example R again. Again, you can see you have to prove that firstly this is the Fourier series of here. You can easily prove that since the limits are from minus pi to plus pi, you can take a as one by pi. You can see here. You can compute the a of n, f of x cos n pi. How you can do that? You can simply take two, multiply two, divide. You can apply as a two cos a. Sine b or two sine a cos b, you will get here. After substitute the value here, you will get this expression, and you can easily write this value as of two plus what is the cos of n pi minus one raised to power n upon here. And clearly says whenever n is odd, it becomes a zero. But make sure n is not equal to one because whenever n is one, it's a zero by zero form. And even is there. It means n is not equal to one is there. So it, I have to calculate a one separately. So for n is one, I can substitute n is one here. This value is there. I can again multiply and divide it by two. What will happen? This is nothing but my sine of two x. And if you integrate them from zero to pi, its value is my zero. Same way you can compute the value of the b n. Again you will get as a zero provided n is not equal to one. Because if n is one, it becomes a zero by zero, and it means you have to compute the value of the b n b one separately for the here. You will get as a one by. After that, you can see this is the Fourier series of here. Now, 
how you can deduce this value since it is a plus minus plus r that is alternating sign so it means your target is to becomes this value as of minus 1 raised power n so when it will be minus 1 raised to power n when it will be cos of n pi so for what value of the x you can choose n so that it becomes my n pi clearly this is a pi by 2 and pi by 2 lies in between them it means you have to take x as a pi by 2 what is the value of the f pi by 2 here pi by 2 lies so sine pi by 2 is my 1 so can you find the value of this from here you can find the value of this and so on now i can write this value as of this so substitute n is 1 n is 2 and so on you will get this series which is the required target of our problem so this is the way you can find the sum of the uh, Fourier series r we will see in the next class how you can find these Fourier half ray sign series Till then you can simply follow this link for finding the various videos. Best of luck students. Happy learning.